our major focus of what we're trying to do. We're trying to get information out to people and then let information take care of itself. The one thing that I know about the Willard School District, the Willard School District, if, if we put the, a need out in front of the Willard School District and the, and, the, and the patrons believe that that need is valid, then they take care of that need. And we've done that time and time again, and that's been successful. So what we're doing tonight, and we're doing right now, the Board of Education and Administration, we're saying that we believe there's some needs for our district and trying to look out there in the future and see how we stay in front of a, of a growing curve of students that are added into our district, as well as try to continue to keep our buildings in great, great shape and look to the future. So that's what we're going to do a little bit tonight. So thanks for being here tonight. So uh, in November, we're going to be looking at a, at a bond issue. Uh, the board has placed on the ballot, and uh, we'll be asking our patrons uh, to make a decision if they'd like to support the plan that we uh, uh, put forward to them. And uh, we, we have spent a lot of time and effort and decision making and putting this plan together. And let me take you through it. So basically, what are the needs and why now? And let me go through this, this list fairly quickly because there's more detailed slides uh, coming in regard to each one of these items. So number one, the expectation level. Expectation level of Willard patrons has always been high in regard to facilities. Our facilities are in really, really nice condition. Now we have some old buildings, such as North that was built in 1953, but it's still a great building. The infrastructure is still there. We just believe it, it, it's time and it needs some attention. Uh, we, have, we have an old boiler system that was actually original. Uh, it's still uh, uh, heated off that boiler system and uh, that, that system in itself needs some attention. And that is a big chunk of the amount of investment into that building to help that building regain new life. So, uh, number one, Willard School District has always wanted to have very nice facilities for our students to be able to utilize. And we want to, I feel my job is to help keep that level of expectation high and support what's been out there for a long, long time. Number two, growth. Just a few statistics in the, since uh, 2013, our school district has grown 300 students, 300 students since 2013. When we opened up Orchard Hills in 09, we opened up Orchard Hills with about 260 students, and we've added 300 students since 13. Now, fortunately, those haven't all been in one building. They've been spread out through the entire district, some at the high school, some at middle school, and so on and so forth. So we've been able to accommodate that growth. Growth, However, that's a lot of kids. And that growth trend is continuing to ramp up. And I'll show, talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Willard Ele North Elementary and Willard Intermediate, we believe, are in uh, need of uh, attention, uh, a time to invest, reinvest in these very good old buildings that bring them back some new life uh, for the kids that attend there and get them into a position where they can continue to serve our students for a long, long time. Improve safety uh, for our students. We, have looked, we currently have buzzard entryways in all of our buildings except our high school. Our high school. We have chosen not to do that at our high school at this time. We have other security aspects that we have in place at the high school, but we have buzzard entry at our, at our buildings that works uh, we actually, at Intermediate School and North, trying to fit a buzzard entry into these old buildings was challenging at best, and we would like to make that situation a little bit more accommodating and uh, more protective, better uh, comfortable as far as the number of people that can use them at one time in order for our patrons. So looking at a more safety improvement for our students. Programming opportunities for students. Uh, with those, if we just look at the high school, the last time that we added a program in high school was in 2002, and that was boys wrestling. And boys wrestling came in, and we actually gave greater opportunity for the young men in our high school uh, to connect with the school. Anytime that students get involved with extracurricular activities, that helps their academics pursue. Uh, those, those things are very tightly interwoven. Uh, we've seen that. There's research studies on that. And with the continued growth in our high school, 
in 2004, our high school uh, was 960, 970 students. Currently, our high school is over 1,300 students. So we've grown close to 400 students in high school uh, since 2002, and we've added no activities. So what we would like to do is add tennis to that, and tennis would provide greater amounts of activity opportunities for students, which would allow them to uh, hook into school and their academics to a greater degree. We think that will be a good program addition. Also, we're looking at, at uh, some upgrades to our football field as far as bringing in a turf uh, field or track is in uh, becoming in disrepair. It's, it's past its life expectancy. Life expectancy is normally about 10 years. We're well past that now. Uh, we have problems with drainage that, uh, that has been on that old track for a long, long time. And basically the base is beginning to degrade out from under the track. And the edges of the track are degrading off. Uh, actually, some of the lanes are beginning to cup and hold water. It's becoming more and more problematic. And we're told that, that those problems will accelerate over the next years once it's starting to break down. So we need to do something with our track. We've looked into that situation. I'll be talking about track and turf a little bit more independently, specifically in a moment. So, as I said before, high school since 2002, 926 students. Enrollment now, 1,327 students, so 400 students. Okay. Orchard Hills Elementary is quickly approaching capacity. Uh, Orchard Hills currently is at 300 and Okay, uh, 379 students, and uh, we have one classroom that could become available next year by moving a program. Okay, we could have an extension of one more classroom. This is our fastest growing building. If we, so the possibility we could move in one more teacher. After that, we're going to have to look at either crowding classrooms or redistricting elementary lines. That's going to be the only option that we have. Now, those two things are possible, but neither one of them are very attractive and, and things that we want to move toward. Again, I'll talk about that more in just a mo moment. The last thing on this slide, J.E. Dunn is a construction management group that actually we met with them today, continue to meet with them periodically to keep abreast of what these continuing uptick in costs are occurring uh, in regard to construction. In the, what they have quoted us, in the next three quarters, uh, they predict that construction costs will go up, excuse me, 5.5%, okay, 5.5%. Why is that? There's three reasons. Increased labor costs, increased material costs, and the last one, which is the lion's share of it, is an increased profit. And the reason why that is, is because for the last several years during the recession, there has, not, there has been very limited to no profit put into construction projects because construct contractors were basically just trying to keep their doors open. So they cut out their profit margin just to keep their men working on jobs and them working on jobs. So they had very little profit margins. So now they're trying to reinsert profit into that equation because now there's uh, construction is beginning to break loose in our area right now in Springfield. You can tell that by seeing the cranes that are going up around town and the rooftops that are going up around town in the Springfield area. The contractors that are still employed, several, many went out of business, okay? The ones that are still employed are becoming busier and busier and that drives up costs also. So 5.5% in nine months. And that's significant. We're in uh, another window of opportunity is what we have at this time before that, uh, that cost continues to accelerate up. Let's take a look at our growth. And here's what I wanted to show during the time of recession, okay? If you look at what our growth was back in, uh, this, right after uh, the turn of the century, we were looking at 1.7 and then up to 5 in 06, 5.5, 07, 4.2, 08, 4.8% growth. That was significant growth, okay? That was bringing in lots of kids. One year was over 200 kids into the school district of Willard. 
And then the recession hit. You can see, right, 2009, the recession hit. And we dropped from 4.8 to 1.8. And then the recession continues to, to lag. We went from 1.8 to 0.8. We got a little boost here to 2. Then we dropped one year in the last decade. We've actually lost students from 42.20 down to 41.97. We lost three students. And then, as we begin to come out of the recession, enrollment begins to build again. So we went from a negative to a positive 0.7. Last year was a 3.1% increase. This year is a 3.9% increase. And if you believe the, the live birth data that we have had projected for us, this kind of growth is going to continue with our live births in the Willard School District. So, I, I, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know exactly what's going to happen last year, but if you look at the trend rate of when the economy was healthy, we had high growth. When the economy uh, came into recession, the growth slowed and even stopped and reversed slightly. And as the economy has come back, we have actually started to grow again. You put your own values and your, only th your own thoughts into that. But my, my caution is that I believe that we're going to continue to grow and that therefore we're going to have to have space for kids. So if you, look, if you want to make some comparisons to try to get your head around these numbers, if we look at the, the school district of Ash Grove, it's 772 students. I think that was last year, actually, maybe the year before. I got it out of core data. Walnut Grove was 287 for a total of 1,059 students. Willard has grown 300 students in the last, since 13. We've grown over 1,000 students in 10 years. We have actually grown two school districts, okay? So if we start thinking about, well, we've built a lot of facilities in the, in the Willard School District, the answer is yes, we have. But if you make comparisons, we've added two small school districts into our, into our uh, school community, and that requires a lot of facilities. What have we done in the past? In 2003, this was a tax increase in order to build the high school. That bond was for $19.6 million. We actually put together uh, some reserve funds and some operating money transfers for the next couple years in order to accomplish our high school. Uh, and uh, we were at our bonding capacity with $19.6 million, but the entire project cost 23.5. And to this day, I am so happy that we invested those dollars when we did, because the cost of construction is incredibly higher now than what it was at that point in time. Then in 2007, we uh, went out to bond with a no tax increase uh, issue, but remember, that was when we were having a great deal. That's when, when the economy was good. The assessed valuation of our district was continually growing. We were having double-digit growth in assessed value uh, and, and also very strong uh, enrollment growth also. And then the recession hit right after we built Orchard Hills. But at Orchard Hills, we had a no tax increase issue and for $13.5 million. We built Orchard Hills, the Ag Facility, the football, soccer, locker rooms, and the South Elementary Gym Addition, plus some improvements to the uh, frontage of South Elementary. So really nice projects back in 2007, very needed for our community. Look at our tax levy history back in, if we go back a decade, 2004-05, our tax levy was $4.04. $4 and then actually, one of the points that I've tried to say uh, uh, several different times is we've always taken a mindset that if we did not need the, the tax levy, that we would give back the tax levy. And we have an example of that because in in 2004-2005, we were at $4.04. And I recommended to the Board of Education at that time that I believed that we could give back a nickel to our community. That was not a rollback, okay? 
Actually, it was a voluntary rollback is what it was. It wasn't a forced rollback because of assessed value. That was a voluntary rollback that the Board of Education did and the, and the administration recommended. So we rolled our tax levy back from $4.04 to $3.99. And we kept that same tax levy for several years. And two years ago, that tax levy was no longer, actually, because of our debt service, okay, uh, and once again, our assessed value actually decreased one year uh, uh, due to the recession. Property values actually decreased in the Willard School District. It's amazing. Uh, 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 many people say, well, my taxes didn't go down. Well, I've contacted the county assessor, and I can show you printout of neighborhoods where taxes actually did uh, were reduced because of reassessment. I've seen it. Actually, what we had to do is we had to increase our debt service levy. So we had to pull that nickel back. The Board of Education and the administration said we cannot no longer do the rollback so, uh, of the nickel. So we added 4.4 cents. And then this year we had to improve, we had to increase that to four dollars and nine cents. So in the last decade, we've added five cents to our total levy that we asked for as a school district. <clears throat> That's over a 10 year period. Okay, what I want to emphasize here are these are very rough numbers. These are not exact, these are estimates by J.E. Dunn. J.E. Dunn, once again, they have a track record. When we interviewed them, uh, they normally come in at 2% plus or minus estimates. So that's what we're hoping for, and we have good faith in their numbers. So, uh, however, these are rough estimates because the contract, the plans are not complete. The final construction plans are not complete yet. So we're looking at, at rough numbers. However, we have contingency that's built into this, so we believe that we'll be within our contingency funds. So if we look at rough numbers for our intermediate addition, we're looking at a classroom addition somewhere five to six classrooms uh, for Willard Intermediate School, plus an overhaul of uh, uh, a good portion of the heat and air system, and that equals we're estimating a little over $4 million. For Orchard Hills Elementary, also, if anybody wants this information, it's on our website, correct, Mike? So these numbers you can find on our website. Uh, if you want to write them down, that's great. If not, just go to our website. Orchard Hills Classroom Edition, we're looking at a classroom edition of four classrooms plus a learning park or a learning space, which is basically a hallway that's a little bit bigger to bring multiple classrooms in. Uh, for that addition, we're looking at $1.4 million. For the high school multi-purpose facility, and again, I'll talk more detail about these in a moment, $2.8 million. This is a large, tall building, 23, 25 foot uh, side walls, basically to allow for uh, co-curricular activities as well as gym classes during the day, uh, lots of different uses that this building will be utilized for. North Elementary, uh, new heat and air system, plus upgrade to the building entry, library, cafeteria, office, $3.4 million. So a lion's share of the investment of, of our project, four, over $4 million, four and a quarter million for intermediate, 3.4 million for north. So closing on $8 million worth of reinvestment into our current buildings. And we believe that, that reinvestment will pay off for years and years and years. Football facility, track and turf, $1.3 million. And then we're looking at adding the tennis program, an eight court complex, for tennis, which has been estimated at $500,000. And then we have two opportunities for a very nice land purchase at $8,000. Actually, one of these pieces of property was in foreclosure. And uh, very, uh, very close to this property, we bought property several years ago for over $20,000 an acre. And we're looking at paying $8,000 an acre to go ahead and purchase this property. We'll have an opportunity for that with this bond revenue. So, very good opportunity uh, for a land purchase. And this land purchase is for future. We're talking 
10 years down the road when we'll be able to utilize property in the south part of our district or in the town of Willard. Total, put it all together, estimate right now $14.45 million. And we're including up to $15.2 million for the total bond for some contingency funds. When these bids go out, they're not going to be exact. So we want to be careful and be able to make sure that we get all the projects fully constructed that we have planned. So that's why we're asking the patrons for $15.2 million. Let's, now let's take them one by one. Intermediate re renovation. We're talking about, like I said before, a classroom addition, five to six classroom addition that would be placed here at the intermediate school. Let me, let me spend just a moment and talk a little bit about some of our early plans. We went out to our patrons a year ago and we started asking them about future bond issues. And we started hearing uh, some conversation that coalesced around the possibility of, of building a new 5-6 on the south side of our district. And we highly considered that. The problem was it became too expensive. If we would add a new intermediate school instead of a renovation into this, it's actually costed out at over, well over $21 million. And we, we don't believe that we can fit, it would be fiscally sound at this time to go to that, that high level of an expense. So we went back to the drawing board and said, basically, how can we do this? And we, we had the, the option that we had to go one of two directions. If we would have went ahead and built the standalone intermediate school, we could have done one other project. And that couldn't have been as large as North. It would have had to be one of the smaller projects. So we could have built the standalone intermediate school, but we wouldn't have been, been able to build the other projects, one of the smaller ones possibly. So it was going to be that costly. So what we did is we said, okay, what can we do to our current facility to meet the current needs and the needs for the next five years? And that's where we came up with the possibility of let's, let's we're already remodeling north, Let's go ahead and finish the remodel in the, in the entire complex of north and intermediate. And then five years down the road, something like that, we can bring back into the picture a possibility of, of uh, a second 5-6 in the south part of our district. And then recapture some of the space that is here uh, that can be utilized for many different purposes. It could be utilized... Hopefully in the future, preschool could possibly be funded at the state. That's an idea that's been thrown out there for years. If that's the case, then we're going to need facilities for four-year-olds. There's, there's many different possibilities. With our growth, there will be uh, uh, ways to fill these spaces that would be left here at the intermediate school. We want to increase the flow, uh, utilizing our classrooms and our hallways. Uh, the flow uh, in this building is not optimal. It's not terrible, but it's not optimal. And we would like to increase that flow and how kids move from one part of this building to another. We'd like to look at upgrading our office space and how that works. Uh, uh, also, uh, from the front, how, how we look uh, at entering the building, how we can uh, improve not only the look of that, but the safety features that go along with, with our frontage and how people come into our building. So that's important to us also. Oh, the last one was security access. Let's go to our Orchard Hills edition. We're looking at a four classroom edition plus the learning park. Again, that's a learning park is a hallway that's just a little bit wider and allows for collaboration space uh, for multiple classrooms. Population in 0910 was 268 students. The current population is, when I did this, was 369, which it's been, I don't know, but that's not today, that was some weeks ago. Uh, the current population is 369. So over 100 students since we opened Orchard Hills in 09. And once again, I have one classroom program that could be moved. If, uh, if, it, if our growth continues, then uh, we have been adding one classroom a year every year. 
if that continues, then I'd have to move a program next year. The following year, I'd either have to re overcrowd classrooms or we would have to redistrict the elementary boundary lines. We believe that this addition would last somewhere in the four to five year range. Like I said, we're adding one classroom a year. Without this addition, as I said, we would have to look at a redistricting. Here's a sample mock-up. Uh, we're, we're actually pretty far into the drawings of Orchard Hills. Uh, uh, Mr. Graves, as well as the architects, have been working with leadership team over at uh, Orchard Hills Elementary and have come up with this concept. Actually, the, the uh, addition is on the south end of the building. Basically, when we constructed Orchard Hills, we made it to where we could add an addition on the north end, or we can add an addition on the south end. We've chosen the south end, and I'll, the reason why is because the city limits of Springfield are right here. And if we build, if we encroach the construction in close to the city limits of Springfield, they have already told us that they're going to force us to build a road up here uh, on the north side of our property to join the community over here to Miller Road. So that would be extremely costly. And when we come back at a future point and have a look at an addition here, we're going to have to be very careful not to encroach on that city limit of Springfield. So we're looking at a classroom addition that will be on the south side of the building. You can see, here's what I'm calling the learning park here. It's a hallway, basically it's an extension of a hallway that's about twice as large. And what it does, it allows multiple classrooms to come out together. And it's a feature that we saw down in Joplin and actually in other buildings uh, in the Kansas City area and the teachers share uh, some really nice uh, 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 opinions and reviews on what this learning park is providing uh, opportunity-wise for uh, the classrooms. Not only that, but they could actually keep their classroom uh, here and we're actually looking at some movement that can come between classrooms. We're starting to look at team teaching uh, in multiple buildings where two teachers are working with the same group of kids. So we're looking at providing some nice flow between classrooms through double doors that would occur between classrooms. So lots of different opportunities for kids and the type of instruction that occurs. High school multi-purpose facility. Very large open facility. We're talking concrete floor, concrete walls, uh, uh, 100 by 150, that's an approximate size that we're looking. 23 to 25 foot sidewalls. Basically, this would allow, uh, apply the high sidewalls. Uh, two of our major extracurricular activities, co-curricular activities, which are ROTC and band, color guard. Basically, we look at um, uh, drills that include uh, twirling and throwing rifles as well as flags and we're, we're needing that extra added height in order to allow them to fully implement their drills uh, at school. Problems, uh, the competing gym space that we now have over at the high school has caused problems with the number of groups competing for that gym space and the dropping of the flags and the rifles have at times damaged our, our wood gym floors. So they've actually cracked boards. We've actually had multiple times that we've had to call in a floor company to have boards replaced because of cracks, uh, because of the drops. So we've had to basically require that they are not on our wood gym floors anymore, which has pushed them to the mezzanine, uh, which is an area of concrete floor. So they only have limited practice areas in the high school now. So this is going to open this back up for them uh, another opportunity to be inside and out of the weather. So, two, three groups that will, will benefit greatly, extracurricular, co-curricular groups, uh, plus PE during the day, 
that will uh, also be there to overflow from our current gym. Gyms, excuse me. One of the things that we're talking about, as we've added once onto our high school facility, we added eight classrooms onto our high school main campus facility. Uh, what we're looking at is future op options for building. So when we build this, we're looking at possibly a time where we could move the ROTC and band classrooms out to this multiple purpose facility, connect them to this multiple uh, multi-purpose facility so they could just flow between their classroom and this, this open space uh, at ease. They don't have to walk across the parking lot. They don't have to carry their instruments. They can just go straight to the facility uh, uh, during the day, during first and second hour as of right now that they actually have those classes. ROTC has classes throughout the day, and they'll be spending a great deal of time out of this facility. But possible uh, movement of classes out to this facility in the future that then we could recapture square footage in the main campus uh, that could be turned into other classroom space. Here's some possible mock-up drawings that we have. Basically, if you'll look right here, this is our ACT facility. Here's our major campus. We're looking at immediately to the west of our ACT facility. Basically, what we're starting to look at is here's our main academic campus, and we're starting to look into this plan of uh, extracurricular, co-curricular activity area, which would be something like this. So we have co-curricular, which would be band, ROTC. Uh, we have agriculture here, and then we get it uh, over into our extracurricular athletic areas over here. So we're looking at a, uh, a design, basically, uh, that would allow an academic uh, area for campus plus extracurricular areas of campus. You can see some possible future design. Here's our, if we have this as our multi-purpose building, this would be a small lobby that would be built onto an opening, and then this could be possible classrooms that would be added in the future. North Elementary, modernized heat and cooling system. That's huge. Basically, we're still, as I shared, working on the old steam uh, heat system, an old boiler system for a major part of the building that has always uh, been problematic for the last decade. The lines uh, are filled with calcium, therefore they're very hard to regulate between hot and cold in classrooms, and uh, that has been problematic for years. Basically, we've had those looked into and uh, determined there's so much calcium buildup, there's absolutely no way to clean them out. If you try to introduce some type of acidic solution to clean out the calcium, it would basically just deteriorate the pipes. So basically we're looking at modernizing the entire uh, heat and cooling system to replace the old boiler system that exists in North. Update to the library. The library at North is uh, one, I love this library. This is my favorite library in the entire district. I love the wood, I love the, the high ceilings. There's so many nice features to it. Uh, the, the library at North, as far as being functional for, for kids, Mrs. Mann works extremely hard to make it a nice, comfortable place for kids. But there's some updating that needs to be happening to that library. Uh, some. Uh, and, and part of the funds that will be utilized for North will go to modernize and help give that library a facelift and, and a place that would be more inviting for kids. Building entry, we're looking at a vestibule that would help uh, provide greater security. If you're familiar with our Orchard Hills uh, building, there's a nice sized vestibule there that parents can actually wait in and they don't, uh, uh, before they actually go into the main part of the building, very secure access. We're looking at something that would move in that direction. Update to the cafeteria. Our cafeteria has not had a great deal of attention since uh, the building was constructed in 53. Lots of paint is what it had, lots of layers of paint. 
So we want to do something more than that. Uh, we actually want to create somewhat of a commons uh, concept to the entryway, and that would include some renovation in our uh, cafeteria. And then we believe that, that if we do some acoustical treatment and some renovation to that cafeteria, we can actually even utilize part of that space for breakout spaces during the day. One of the things that we're learning that kids like to move. If you trap kids into a classroom all day long, then they become tired and their brains become tired. If you get them out and give them opportunities to move to other spaces in the building, their brains start to wake up. We actually, over at East, I just uh, invested about $15,000 and we built a nice little learning park at the end of the, the hallway uh, by investing in some, some uh, metal studs and sheetrock and, and some ceiling tile, furniture, carpet, uh, a little bit of technology and paint and uh, made it accessible for kids during the day and kids are just having a ball with it. Teachers are taking kids down to this area and they just act differently when they get there. It's amazing. You need to come and see it. I'm, I'm really proud of it. And we hope that those kind of things can happen uh, in this commons type concept uh, besides just being a cafeteria. Update to the office area. As I've said in the past, we have a very small office area. It actually inhibits the security uh, control because when you are buzzed into uh, North Elementary, you go straight into a hallway. You don't go into an office and then into a hallway. You go straight into an all hallway, and we would like to change that. We'd like to bring also uh, the counselor is down in one part of the building and the office, the principal is in another part of the building and we would like to bring those people together so that they can collaborate also. Improved security, we've talked about. Here's a mock-up, okay? There's a, just a little over a thousand square feet of new construction. That is the corner where the entryway is into North. So it is not a huge investment into new construction. Thousand square feet. And if you're looking at it, you're looking at that triangle right there. The major reconstruction is in the building itself, the heat and the air. Here's the library. Here's the current gymnasium, cafeteria. And then remodeled to the office space and classrooms. Lots and lots. We're, we're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of one point four million in heat and air okay 1.4 million in heat and air alone to upgrade in this building the, the costs are staggering what they are football facility basically football track facility first thing what we would do is we would actually remove not only the track but all the way down to the base the base is what the problem is so we have to pull out the entire base. So we're talking about move, removing two to three feet of, of uh, dirt, sand, uh, uh, underlayment basically underneath the football field as well as the track. And then they would build that back in with, and recompact that back in with appropriate drainage. <clears throat> and uh, as I shared before, it was built in 98. It's well past its, its expected uh, life. Uh, but we've taken good care of it. We've been able to stretch that. If you go and look at it with the naked eye, it actually looks pretty decent. We painted it about three to four years ago. So when you first look at it, it doesn't look bad. But as if you walked over there and with one of us that could start pointing out different things that are problematic, and if you realize the number of times that we've had to go in and cut out pieces and then come back and relay asphalt, well, repack the base, relay asphalt, bring back on synthetic surface to uh, fix places that, it, that are starting to fall out, then you'd realize the problems that we're facing. And that is escalating. The addition of artificial turf, one of the things, uh, two different things that we are looking at here. Number one, 
in, in talking to manufacturers and, and installers, the time to install uh, artificial turf is at the same time that you're talking about installing a track. Why is that? Well, the fact is, is that the inside curb of the track is the anchor for the artificial turf. So the artificial turf is held in place by that curb. So you can play it out in your head basically, understand if we have to go and build a track and then three, like, three years later try to come back and then tear out and build, tear out that curb, lay the uh, artificial turf down and then relay a curb, the costs become, uh, 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 it, I wouldn't say excessive, but the, the cost for the product and doing it in that order is wasteful because it ends up and costs more money in the long run. So in, in talking to different districts that have done this, and there are now many districts throughout southwest Missouri that have went through this process, all of them have shared the time to do this is at the same time that you're resurfacing the track or actually redoing the track then you install artificial turf and you end up and save somewhere in the neighborhood of fifty to a hundred thousand dollars by doing it at the same time. Second thing, that was number one. The second thing is looking at student safety. There is data out there that is showing the concussion rate that we're having to deal with with our students. It's not only football, it's, it's uh, soccer students also that are competing. It's clear that the concussion rate is less on, uh, on this turf. This turf is not like the old hard turf that was there uh, that they first came out with 10 years ago. This is rubberized filled turf and if you've walked on it at Kickapoo or, or Central or, or Aurora or Webb City or Branson, you felt that it is extremely soft and, and filled with rubberized material which uh, lessens the impact to athletes when they fall, lessens the concussion rate that, that occurs because many of the concussion rates happen because of head to ground, not head to head. So that's something that we hope. The third thing, and, and that goes along with that, is our grass surface. We have multiple groups now, football teams that are practicing, not practicing, playing, competing, on our football field. Seventh grade football, eighth grade football, ninth grade football, junior varsity football, varsity football, youth football league all Saturday, and uh, we normally allow the homeschool students to compete one time on our football field also. It's overused, and by the end of the season, the turf, uh, the grass turf, the natural grass turf is just destroyed in many areas, not throughout, but many areas, you end up and just have patches of dirt and hard earth. And we try to water that to keep it soft, but the fact is it gets extremely hard and that's when injuries continue to occur at a higher rate. Addition of a new track, we've spoken about that. Here's some possible mock-ups. These are just possibilities. Once again, these are not finalized in any way or shape, shape or fashion but possibility of what it would look like. Overhead, again, we're still looking at that. Here's a possibility for tennis. We haven't talked about tennis yet. And a possible location. And you can see here's our act building. Here's our main campus. East is back over here. Our football field, and this would be tennis. We'd be able to share parking with the uh, football, uh, and soccer locker rooms, uh, possibly expand this gravel parking lot a little bit, hopefully in the future come back and pay that, but uh, we would have some parking that could be shared for those facilities. Tennis, uh, uh, as far as tennis goes, we've talked about opportunity for students. We think that it's a sport for not only boy, uh, boys and girls both, which is very good. So actually what the use is doubled by, by having two sports that are added with the facility use. The year-to-year -year cost for tennis is not high. Uh, the cost of transportation and the cost of a uh, coaching stipend and a little bit of equipment uh, 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 is not significant. It's not a high-cost sport. 
except for the original investment. And uh, we're looking at some uh, variation, oh, sorry, of an, of an eight court system that would be uh, constructed on the high school campus. Once again, I'm not sure exactly what that uh, configuration would be, but here would be one example. And one thing that, that we would want to do, we've always had this, this philosophy of having it open to our community. Our track facility right now is open to, to the community. If you go out there on almost any night, there's people walking our track continually. We want that to continue. Uh, uh, the same thing with tennis. We will have uh, at least a portion of these courts that would be open for the community to use. It's possible that we might have a competition court that we cordon off only for competition sake in order to keep that at a high level. But we are uh, confident that we can open up these uh, uh, either part or all of these facilities to our community to allow for the community to use them also. Student interest is, is high. We actually did a survey a few years ago to see how much interest. We had somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 to, eight, 70 to 80 students that said at that time that they would be uh, interested in coming out for tennis at that time. Uh, uh, whether those numbers would happen in the first year, I don't know. If you look at our sister schools uh, throughout the Central Ozark Conference, every other school district in the C Central Ozark Conference, large and small uh, schools, some of these districts are half the size of Willard, every one of them have tennis, and every one of them have enough participants to support tennis. So I believe that the participants will, will occur here also. The opportunity, when the opportunity is given, I believe the students will come. Once again, I shared since 2002, 400 students have been added to the high school, and uh, since that time, there have been no new added uh, opportunities uh, uh, for uh, athletic opportunities for our students. We talked about where it would be located. We talked that it would be open to the community. Six to eight regulation courts. We want to have lights. Uh, uh, I, I can't tell you that every one of them will be lighted. That decision hasn't been made yet, but at least a portion of them would be lighted uh, for co competition at night and will be constructed on the high school campus. We are looking at that corner. That has not been finalized. Let's talk about the costs. That's something that, that patrons always want to be aware of. So let's look at where we're at now. Right now, the levies for us as well as our peer schools, we always compare ourselves to these schools. We think we're very similar to these school districts in areas of demographics, in, uh, in areas of size, uh, quality uh, of school. These are very high quality schools uh, throughout Southwest Missouri. And if you look at this time, the total, the, the levies between these districts, Willard and Branson, have the lowest two levies of all of our sister schools that we consider peers. Okay? We're at $4.09, Branson is $4.09. And I'll tell you folks, if, uh, if you think that between Willard and Branson, the economies of scale are the same, the amount of money that is in the Branson School District is very different than the amount of money that is in the, in the Willard School District. And we have been able to keep our tax levy identical to Branson. Nix is at 431, Ozarks at 414, Republic's at 428. If we add 15 cents, which is what we're proposing on the ballot, it would move our debt service up to $1.08 and would move our, our total levy to 424. At 424, we would then move into the middle of the pack. We would be above Branson, we would be above Ozark, we would be below Republic and below Mixa. And we believe that 424 would continue to service the debt throughout uh, uh, its future. So it is a tax levy increase. That's something that I want to be very clear about. I want to be very honest about uh, and also uh, share to patrons what they're getting with that 15 cents 
and then how they compare to our peer schools. What would it cost the individual? If you look at your home, if you have a home that's appraised at $100,000, $100,000 home, so if you have a $200,000 home, it would be twice this amount. If you have a $50,000 home, it would be half this amount. So if you have a $100,000 home appraised at $100,000, your increase in taxes is going to cost $2.38 a month. And basically, I've always shared with people that that's less than the cost of a happy meal. One other way to compare it, and if you want to go through the numbers, here's your 100000 Here's your assessed value. Residential is assessed at $0.19. Cents. Multiply that times the increase, which is $0.15. Cents. Divide by 12 months. Take that, divide it by 100, and you end up with your cost per month. If you want to look at a farm because you're a farmer, if you have a 100 acre farm, and if that farm is valued at $4,000 an acre, now that's on the high side in Willard, there's a lot of farmers that said, I wish my, my farm was valued at, at $4,000 an acre, but if you have a 100 acre farm valued at $4,000 an acre, that ends up to a cost of $6 a month. Go through the numbers, you have 100 acres, $4,000, that's $400,000. Farmland, agriculture is assessed at 12% 12, 12 multiply that times the increase of 15 cents, divided by 12 for 12 months, divide that entire equation by 100, gives you $6 a month, less than the cost of a medium pizza. I always think in the terms of food, so it always helps me. So that's the cost. That's what it's going to end up at cost the individual uh, in Willard for the patron uh, that owns a home and the farmer that owns a plot of land. That's the presentation. Uh, where, where the board and administration are at is these projects have been on the board for a long time. Uh, we started, we looked at a uh, long range planning uh, team back in 06 and if you look back at that if you actually go to the website that we have for the bond it shows the long-range plans that were in place in 06 you'll see many of these projects were on the books at that time we had a second one that happened in 11 2011 and the same thing you'll see many of these projects are uh, on the projected list of that long-range plan in 11 also You'll see things that are on those plans that we have actually completed and, and done also uh, that have already been completed and checked off. And you'll see a, a couple things that this bond issue, as well as what we've done so far, we haven't been able to complete them up until now. So they'll stay on the list for the future and we'll continue to reevaluate re them. And as they rise in priority, then we'll try to figure out ways in order to accommodate those also. But we believe it's a good plan. We believe it's something that we want to put in front of patrons. And uh, we'll see if we uh, get the support in November. So, questions? 